the Epic of Gilgamesh, the oldest quest for immortality introduction, the timeless search for immortality throughout human history, stories have served as more than mere entertainment. They have been a conduit for transmitting values, beliefs, and lessons across generations and cultures. Among these stories, the Epic of Gilgamesh holds a special place as one of the oldest and most influential literary works known to humanity. Written in the ancient Sumerian civilization of Mesopotamia around 2100 to 1800 BCE, this epic not only captivates us with its rich narrative but also challenges us with its profound exploration of universal themes such as friendship, mortality, and the eternal quest for immortality. The Epic of Gilgamesh is a narrative that transcends time, offering insights into the human condition that remain relevant even today. As we delve into this ancient story, we find that its characters, their struggles, and their quests mirror our own search for meaning, purpose, and understanding in life. The story revolves around Gilgamesh, the legendary king of Uruk, and his journey from arrogance and tyranny to wisdom and self-awareness. His quest for immortality, driven by the fear of death and the loss of his dear friend Enkidu, is a journey that resonates deeply with the human experience. In this comprehensive exploration, we will not only recount the events of the Epic of Gilgamesh but also delve into the philosophical and moral lessons that this ancient story imparts. We will examine how Gilgamesh's journey, though rooted in the distant past, speaks to the timeless themes of life, death, friendship, and the search for meaning. But before we embark on the tale itself, it is essential to understand the civilization in which this epic was born, a civilization that is recognized as the cradle of one of the earliest human societies, Sumer. The civilization of Sumer, cradle of the first human societies The story of Gilgamesh is deeply intertwined with the history and culture of the Sumerian civilization, one of the earliest known civilizations in the world. Mesopotamia, the land that today lies within modern Iraq, was the cradle of this ancient civilization. It was here, between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, that the Sumerians developed one of the first complex societies known to humankind. This civilization flourished for thousands of years, from around 4500 to 1900 BCE, and left an indelible mark on the course of human history. The Sumerians were remarkable for their achievements in various fields, laying the foundations for many aspects of modern civilization. Among their most significant contributions was the invention of the first known system of writing, cuneiform. Initially developed for recording economic transactions, cuneiform evolved into a versatile writing system used for documenting literature, laws, and history. This innovation in writing allowed the Sumerians to preserve their thoughts, beliefs, and stories, enabling their culture to be passed down through the ages. It is through this writing system that the Epic of Gilgamesh has survived, offering us a glimpse into the minds and hearts of the ancient Sumerians. In addition to their advancements in writing, the Sumerians made significant strides in architecture, engineering, and mathematics. They built some of the first cities, complete with intricate urban planning and monumental structures. The ziggurats, massive temple complexes that served as centers of worship and administration, are among the most iconic remnants of Sumerian architecture. These structures, towering over the flat Mesopotamian landscape, symbolize the connection between the earth and the heavens, reflecting the Sumerians' deep religious and spiritual beliefs. Religion was at the core of Sumerian life, influencing every aspect of their society. The Sumerians worshipped a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each associated with specific aspects of the natural world and human experience. These deities were believed to control the forces of nature, dictate the fate of individuals and cities, and maintain the order of the cosmos. The Sumerians saw themselves as the servants of these gods, and much of their culture revolved around appeasing and honoring the divine beings who govern their lives. Among the many gods of the Sumerian pantheon, Anu, the god of the heavens, and Enlil, the god of air and storms, were among the most powerful. These deities, along with others like Inanna, also known as Ishtar, the goddess of love and war, played crucial roles in the myths and stories that the Sumerians told to explain the world around them. The Epic of Gilgamesh is deeply rooted in this religious context, with its narrative shaped by the interactions between humans and the divine. At the heart of this epic is Gilgamesh, the king of Uruk, who was believed to be two-thirds divine and one-third human. 
As a ruler, Gilgamesh was known for his immense strength and unmatched abilities in war and governance. However, his divine heritage also made him arrogant and tyrannical, leading to a reign that brought suffering to the people of Uruk. This combination of divine power and human flaws makes Gilgamesh a complex and fascinating character, whose story reflects the Sumerians' understanding of the delicate balance between human agency and divine will. As we begin to explore the Epic of Gilgamesh, it is important to keep in mind the cultural and religious context in which it was created. The Sumerians' beliefs in the power of the gods, the significance of the natural world, and the importance of fulfilling one's duties to the divine are all central themes in the epic. Understanding these elements will help us appreciate the depth and complexity of the story, as well as the lessons it offers to us, thousands of years after it was first written. The beginning of the story, King of Uruk and the creation of Enkidu The Epic of Gilgamesh begins with a vivid description of Uruk, the magnificent city ruled by Gilgamesh. Uruk, located near the modern city of Warka in Iraq, was one of the most important cities in ancient Sumer. It was renowned for its massive walls, which were said to have been built by Gilgamesh himself. These walls, constructed from baked clay bricks, were not only a testament to the architectural prowess of the Sumerians but also a symbol of the power and authority of their king. Gilgamesh, as described in the epic, was a king unlike any other. He was a demigod, born of the union between the goddess Ninsun and Lugalbanda, a mortal king. This divine lineage bestowed upon him extraordinary strength, courage, and wisdom, making him a formidable ruler and a fearsome warrior. However, his divine attributes also contributed to his arrogance and pride. Gilgamesh ruled Uruk with an iron fist, imposing heavy burdens on his people and taking whatever he desired without regard for the consequences. The people of Uruk, suffering under the weight of Gilgamesh's tyranny, cried out to the gods for relief. They pleaded with the gods to create someone who could stand up to Gilgamesh and curb his excesses. The gods, hearing the prayers of the people, decided to create a being who would be Gilgamesh's equal, a counterpart who could challenge him and bring balance to his reign. In response to these pleas, the goddess Aruru, the creator of mankind, fashioned Enkidu out of clay and water. Enkidu was a wild and powerful being, initially living among the animals in the wilderness. He was a creature of nature, untainted by the corruption of civilization. His body was covered in hair, and he roamed the plains, running with the gazelles and drinking from the rivers. Enkidu was a symbol of the untamed forces of nature, a being who lived in harmony with the natural world. The creation of Enkidu marked a turning point in the epic. His arrival was intended to counterbalance Gilgamesh's unchecked power and to remind the king of his own mortality and limitations. However, before Enkidu could fulfill this role, he needed to be introduced to the world of humans and civilization. One day, a trapper, who had been frustrated by Enkidu's interference with his traps, encountered this wild man and was struck by his strength and wildness. The trapper, recognizing that Enkidu was no ordinary man, sought advice from his father, who told him to bring a temple priestess, Shamhat, to tame Enkidu and bring him to Uruk. Shamhat was a priestess of Ishtar, the goddess of love and fertility, and her role in the story is significant. Through her, Enkidu would be introduced to the human world, leaving behind his life in the wilderness. The trapper and Shamhat journeyed to the place where Enkidu lived, and Shamhat used her beauty and charm to draw Enkidu out of the wild. For six days and seven nights, Enkidu and Shamhat were together, during which Enkidu's connection to the natural world began to fade. As Enkidu became more human, he lost his ability to live among the animals. When he tried to return to them, they fled from him, no longer recognizing him as one of their own. This realization marked the beginning of Enkidu's transformation from a wild being to a civilized man. Shamhat, seeing that Enkidu had changed, encouraged him to go to Uruk, where he would meet Gilgamesh and fulfill the purpose for which he was created. Enkidu, now aware of his own humanity and intrigued by the stories he had heard about Gilgamesh, agreed to accompany Shamhat to the city. As Enkidu and Shamhat made their way to Uruk, the city was buzzing with anticipation. Gilgamesh, who had heard rumors of a wild man roaming the plains, was curious to meet this mysterious figure. Unbeknownst to him, Enkidu was destined to become not just his rival, but also his closest companion. 
When Enkidu arrived in Uruk, he was struck by the grandeur of the city and the power of its king. However, he was also deeply troubled by the tales of Gilgamesh's tyranny. Determined to confront the king, Enkidu placed himself in Gilgamesh's path, challenging him to a battle. The confrontation between Gilgamesh and Enkidu was epic. The two men, both possessing immense strength and courage, fought fiercely, neither willing to back down. The streets of Uruk echoed with the sound of their struggle as they clashed like titans, each testing the limits of the other. The fight was intense, with neither man able to gain a decisive advantage. But as the battle raged on, something remarkable happened. Instead of hatred, a deep mutual respect began to grow between them. They recognized in each other a kindred spirit, two men of extraordinary power who had finally met their match. The fight, which had begun as a contest of strength, ended in a draw, with both men exhausted but unbroken. In that moment, a bond was forged between Gilgamesh and Enkidu that would change the course of both their lives. They became inseparable friends, united by their shared strength and courage. Gilgamesh, who had been a lonely and arrogant ruler, found in Enkidu a true companion, someone who could challenge him, guide him, and help him become a better leader. This friendship hip had a profound impact on Gilgamesh. For the first time, he began to see beyond his own desires and consider the needs and well-being of others. Enkidu, in turn, became more integrated into human society, learning about the customs, values, and responsibilities that came with civilization. Together, they embarked on a series of adventures that would test their friendship and push them to the limits of their endurance. One of the first and most significant adventures that Gilgamesh and Enkidu undertook together was their journey to the cedar forest. This forest, sacred to the gods, was home to the mighty cedar trees, which were prized for their wood. However, the forest was also guarded by Humbaba, a fearsome monster appointed by the god Enlil to protect the trees from human intrusion. Humbaba was no ordinary guardian. He was a giant with a terrifying visage, capable of breathing fire and causing earthquakes with his roar. The mere mention of his name struck fear into the hearts of those who heard it. Yet, despite the danger, Gilgamesh was determined to venture into the cedar forest, not only to prove his might, but also to secure his place in history as a hero who dared to challenge the gods. Enkidu, familiar with the dangers of the forest and the wrath of Humbaba, initially tried to dissuade Gilgamesh from this perilous quest. However, Gilgamesh's resolve was unwavering. He convinced Enkidu that together, they could overcome any obstacle, even a monster as formidable as Humbaba. With their minds made up, Gilgamesh and Enkidu prepared for the journey. They sought the blessings of the sun god Shamash, who, moved by their courage, agreed to assist them. Shamash provided them with favorable omens and promised to unleash the forces of nature against Humbaba when the time came. The journey to the cedar forest was long and arduous. Gilgamesh and Enkidu crossed mountains, rivers, and treacherous terrain, driven by their determination to confront Humbaba. As they approached the forest, the air grew thick with the scent of cedar, and the towering trees loomed above them like ancient sentinels. Upon entering the forest, Gilgamesh and Enkidu were awed by its beauty and majesty, but they knew that danger lurked nearby. They advanced cautiously, their senses heightened, aware that Humbaba could strike at any moment. The tension was palpable as they ventured deeper into the forest, each step bringing them closer to their fateful encounter with the monster. When they finally reached Humbaba's lair, the ground trembled beneath their feet, and the sky darkened as if the heavens themselves were preparing for the battle to come. Humbaba emerged from the shadows, his eyes blazing like fire and his voice thundering like an earthquake. He towered over Gilgamesh and Enkidu, a living embodiment of the forest's wrath. The battle that ensued was one of epic proportions. Humbaba unleashed his full fury upon the two heroes, but they stood their ground, fighting with all their might. Gilgamesh, wielding his divine weapons, struck at Humbaba with relentless force, while Enkidu, using his agility and strength, kept the monster off balance. Despite Humbaba's immense power, the combined strength and skill of Gilgamesh and Enkidu began to turn the tide of the battle. Shamash, true to his promise, sent powerful winds to bind Humbaba, weakening him and giving Gilgamesh and Enkidu the advantage they needed. 
Realizing that he was outmatched, Humbaba pleaded for his life, offering to serve Gilgamesh as his loyal vassal. But Enkidu, aware of the dangers of sparing such a powerful enemy, urged Gilgamesh to deliver the final blow. With a heavy heart, Gilgamesh complied, striking down Humbaba and ending the battle. The defeat of Humbaba was a monumental achievement, marking Gilgamesh and Enkidu as heroes of legend. They felled the sacred cedars and built a great raft to transport the logs back to Uruk, where they would be used to construct magnificent buildings and fortifications. However, their victory also came with consequences, for the gods were angered by the slaying of Humbaba, who had been their appointed guardian. After their triumphant return to Uruk, Gilgamesh and Enkidu found themselves the subjects of both admiration and fear. Their defeat of Humbaba had elevated them to the status of legends, but it had also drawn the attention of the gods, particularly Ishtar, the goddess of love and war. Ishtar, captivated by Gilgamesh's prowess and fame, proposed marriage to him, offering him great wealth and power in exchange for his hand. However, Gilgamesh, aware of Ishtar's volatile nature and the fate of her previous lovers, rejected her offer with disdain. He recounted the tragic fates of Ishtar's former consorts, warning her that he would not be another victim of her capriciousness. Enraged by Gilgamesh's rejection and public humiliation, Ishtar sought revenge. She ascended to the heavens and demanded that her father, Anu, the god of the sky, release the Bull of Heaven, a celestial beast of immense power to punish Gilgamesh and wreak havoc upon Uruk. The Bull of Heaven, once unleashed, brought devastation to the city. Its mere presence caused the earth to tremble, and with each step, chasms opened in the ground, swallowing the people of Uruk. The terror it unleashed was unlike anything the city had ever seen, and its rampage threatened to destroy everything Gilgamesh had built. But Gilgamesh and Enkidu, undaunted by the divine retribution, rose to the challenge. Together, they faced the Bull of Heaven, determined to protect their city and their people. The battle was fierce, with the Bull's strength and fury pushing them to their limits. However, their unwavering determination and the bond of their friendship gave them the edge they needed. Ankidu, displaying his incredible strength, managed to seize the bull by its horns, holding it steady while Gilgamesh delivered the killing blow. The bull of heaven fell, and with its death, the threat to Uruk was vanquished. However, this victory came at a great cost. The gods, enraged by the death of the bull of heaven, decreed that one of the two heroes must be punished for their defiance. The choice fell upon Enkidu, whose fate would lead to the next great turning point in the epic. The god's punishment was swift and merciless. Enkidu, the loyal friend and companion of Gilgamesh, was struck down by a debilitating illness sent by the gods. His once mighty body, which had withstood the fiercest battles and the harshest environments, began to wither away. The pain and suffering he endured were unbearable both for him and for Gilgamesh, who was powerless to save his friend. As Enkidu lay dying, he reflected on his life, lamenting the loss of his connection to the natural world and cursing the day he was brought to Uruk. He expressed deep sorrow for having been pulled into the world of humans where he had experienced both great joy and immense suffering. His grief was compounded by the realization that despite all their heroic deeds and victories, Neither he nor Gilgamesh could escape the inevitability of death. In his final moments, Enkidu reconciled with his fate. He called out to Gilgamesh, urging him to remember their friendship and the lessons they had learned together. Enkidu's death was not just a personal loss for Gilgamesh. It was a stark reminder of the mortality that awaited them all, a truth that even the mightiest of heroes could not escape. The loss of Enkidu plunged Gilgamesh into a deep and overwhelming grief. His sorrow was compounded by the realization that death was inescapable, even for someone as powerful as he was. This grief, however, also sparked a new resolve within Gilgamesh. Determined not to succumb to the same fate as his friend, he vowed to find the secret of immortality and conquer death itself. Enkidu's death marked a profound turning point in Gilgamesh's life. Once a king who reveled in his own strength and invincibility, Gilgamesh now found himself confronted with the harsh reality of his own mortality. The thought of dying terrified him, and he could not bear the idea of fading into oblivion as countless others had before him. 
Fueled by this fear, Gilgamesh embarked on a quest that would take him far from the comforts of Uruk into the unknown reaches of the world in search of the secret to eternal life. This journey was not merely a physical one, it was also a deeply spiritual and philosophical quest. Gilgamesh sought answers to the questions that had plagued humanity since the dawn of time. Why must we die? Is there a way to escape death? What is the meaning of life if it inevitably ends in death? These questions drove him to push the boundaries of his endurance to confront dangers that no other mortal had dared to face. Gilgamesh's first destination on this journey was the distant land where Utnapishtim, the immortal man, was said to dwell. Utnapishtim was one of the few humans who had been granted eternal life by the gods, and Gilgamesh believed that if he could reach him, he would uncover the secret to immortality. However, the path to Utnapishtim's abode was fraught with peril, and Gilgamesh would need to call upon all his strength, courage, and wisdom to succeed. One of the most treacherous challenges that Gilgamesh faced on his journey was crossing the mountains of Mashu. These mountains were believed to be the gateway between the mortal world and the divine realm, a place where the sun rose and set each day. The entrance to the mountains was guarded by fearsome creatures known as the Scorpion Men, half scorpion, half human beings who possessed both the wisdom of the gods and the ferocity of nature. When Gilgamesh arrived at the foot of the mountains, he was confronted by these terrifying guardians. The Scorpion Men, recognizing that Gilgamesh was a mortal who sought to enter the realm of the gods, warned him of the dangers that lay ahead. They told him, O oh Gilgamesh, you are a mortal who seeks something beyond your power. Immortality is a gift granted only to the gods, and humans must accept their fate. But Gilgamesh, undeterred by their warnings, replied with determination, I cannot return to my city without answers. I will face any danger to achieve my goal. Impressed by his resolve, the Scorpion men allowed him to pass, but not before offering him guidance for the journey ahead. As Gilgamesh ventured deeper into the mountains, he encountered other mythical beings and faced numerous challenges. Each encounter provided him with valuable lessons and insights, which he carried with him as he pressed on toward his ultimate goal. These beings, though often dangerous and mysterious, also offered wisdom and guidance, reminding Gilgamesh that the path to enlightenment was not always straightforward and that every obstacle he faced was a test of his character and resolve. One such encounter was with the stone giants, ancient creatures who guarded the way to the realm of Napishtim. The stone giants, whose skin was as hard as rock and whose eyes glowed with the fire of the Earth's core, challenged Gilgamesh to prove his worth. They warned him that the journey ahead would require not only physical strength, but also the wisdom to make the right choices. Gilgamesh, mindful of the guidance he had received from the Scorpion Men, approached the stone giants with humility and respect. He listened carefully to their advice, understanding that brute force alone would not be enough to overcome the challenges ahead. In doing so, he gained their trust, and they allowed him to continue his journey. As Gilgamesh continued his journey, he eventually reached the Garden of the Gods, a place of unparalleled beauty and serenity. This garden, filled with trees that bore jewels instead of fruit, and rivers that sparkled with the light of the stars, was a stark contrast to the harsh and barren landscapes he had traversed around. It was here that he encountered Siduri, the goddess of wine and wisdom. Siduri, who had observed Gilgamesh's long and arduous journey, welcomed him with compassion and understanding. She saw the weariness in his eyes and the desperation in his heart. Recognizing the pain that drove him, Siduri offered him solace and counsel. She advised him to abandon his quest for immortality and instead embrace the life he had been given, to enjoy the simple pleasures of food, drink, and love, and to make the most of the time he had. Gilgamesh, she said, you seek that which the gods have reserved for themselves. Immortality is not for mortals. The life you have been given is fleeting, yes, but it is also precious. Cherish it, and do not waste it in the pursuit of something that cannot be attained. Though Siduri's words were wise, Gilgamesh was not ready to accept them. His grief for Enkidu and his fear of death still weighed heavily on him, and he could not bring himself to abandon his quest. 
He thanked Siduri for her kindness and wisdom, but told her that he must continue on his journey. Siduri, understanding his resolve, directed him to the boatman Urshanabi, who could help him cross the waters of death and reach Utnapishtim's abode. The waters of death were a vast and treacherous sea that separated the mortal world from the realm of the gods. No mortal could cross these waters and live, for they were filled with the essence of death itself. Urshanabi, the boatman, was one of the few beings who knew the secret of navigating these deadly waters, and it was he who would ferry Gilgamesh across to the other side. When Gilgamesh met Urshanabi, he was prepared for yet another challenge. He told the boatman of his quest and asked for his help in reaching Utnapishtim. Urshanabi, impressed by Gilgamesh's determination, but also aware of the dangers, agreed to take him across the waters of death. However, he warned Gilgamesh that the journey would be perilous and that even the slightest mistake could cost him his life. Before setting out, Urshanabi instructed Gilgamesh to cut down 120 poles, which they would use to propel the boat across the waters without touching the deadly liquid. Gilgamesh, strong and determined, completed the task, and together they set off on the final leg of the journey. As they crossed the waters of death, Gilgamesh's mind was filled with thoughts of Enkidu and the purpose of his quest. He knew that he was closer than ever to uncovering the secret of immortality, yet he also felt the weight of the journey's toll on his body and soul. The waters, dark and ominous, seemed to reflect the inner turmoil that had driven him to this point. When they finally reached the far shore, Gilgamesh was exhausted but resolute. He thanked Urshanabi for his guidance and prepared himself for the final encounter with Utnapishtim, the man who held the key to the secret he so desperately sought. Utnapishtim, who lived in a distant land at the edge of the world, was unlike any other mortal. He had been granted eternal life by the gods, a gift that had been bestowed upon him for a very specific reason. When Gilgamesh finally stood before Utnapishtim, he was struck by the man's calm demeanor and the wisdom that radiated from him. Gilgamesh, filled with a mixture of hope and desperation, recounted his journey and the loss of his friend Enkidu. He asked Utnapishtim to reveal the secret of immortality, hoping that he too could be granted the gift of eternal life. Utnapishtim, moved by Gilgamesh's story, agreed to share his tale. He told Gilgamesh of a time long ago when the gods, displeased with humanity's wickedness, decided to cleanse the earth with a great flood. The god Ea, however, took pity on Utnapishtim and warned him of the impending disaster. Ea instructed Utnapishtim to build a great ship and gather his family, along with every species of animal, to preserve life during the flood. Utnapishtim followed Ea's instructions constructing a massive vessel and filling it with all the necessary provisions. When the floodwaters came, they covered the earth, destroying everything in their path. For seven days and seven nights, the storm raged and the world was submerged beneath the waters. But Utnapishtim's ship, guided by the will of the gods, survived the deluge. When the storm finally subsided and the waters began to recede, Utnapishtim released a dove to search for dry land. The dove returned, finding no place to rest, but on its second journey, it did not return, signaling that the waters had receded enough to reveal land. Utnapishtim and his family disembarked, offering sacrifices to the gods in gratitude for their survival. The gods, moved by Utnapishtim's piety and the preservation of life, granted him and his wife immortality, allowing them to live forever in peace at the edge of the world. This story of the Great Flood with its themes of divine judgment, survival, and the sanctity of life, bears striking similarities to the biblical tale of Noah's Ark, illustrating the shared motifs in ancient flood narratives across cultures. After recounting his story, Utnapishtim turned to Gilgamesh and said, Immortality is not something that can be sought through strength or will. It is a gift bestowed by the gods for reasons beyond human understanding. The life that you seek, Gilgamesh, is not meant for mortals. These words struck Gilgamesh deeply. Despite his incredible journey and all the challenges he had overcome, the answer he had sought so desperately seemed to be slipping away. However, Utnapishtim, seeing Gilgamesh's despair, offered him one final chance to achieve what he desired. 
the plan of immortality, a hope that slips away Utnapishtim revealed to Gilgamesh the existence of a plant that grew deep beneath the sea, a plant that possessed the power to restore youth and grant a semblance of immortality. He described it as a thorny plant with a flower that emitted a radiant glow. This plant, Utnapishtim said, was known as the plant of life, and it was capable of rejuvenating anyone who consumed it. With renewed hope, Gilgamesh prepared to undertake the dangerous dive to retrieve the plant. He tied stones to his feet to weigh himself down and plunged into the depths of the sea. The descent was long and perilous, the water around him dark and cold. But Gilgamesh's determination was unwavering, and he finally reached the seabed, where he found the glowing plant. With the plant in hand, Gilgamesh cut the stones from his feet and ascended back to the surface. As he emerged from the water, he held the plant aloft, filled with triumph and anticipation. He believed that with this plant, he could not only restore his own youth but also share its power with the people of Uruk, ensuring that his legacy would live on forever. However, fate had a different plan. As Gilgamesh made his way back to Uruk, he stopped to rest by a cool spring. Exhausted from his journey, he fell asleep, placing the plant beside him. As he slept, a serpent, drawn by the plant's divine scent, slithered out of the underbrush and devoured it. The serpent immediately shed its skin and slithered away, rejuvenated and renewed by the plant's power. When Gilgamesh awoke and discovered what had happened, he was devastated. The one chance he had to secure immortality had been taken from him, not by a mighty foe or a god, but by a simple creature of the earth. The realization that his quest had ended in failure was almost too much to bear. In that moment, Gilgamesh finally understood the futility of his pursuit. He recognized that death was a fate that no mortal could escape, and that seeking to defy it was a path fraught with inevitable disappointment. Return to Uruk, acceptance of mortality and immortality and legacy with a heavy heart, Gilgamesh returned to Uruk. But he was no longer the same man who had embarked on the journey to find immortality. His experiences had transformed him, imparting a wisdom that he had lacked when he first set out. Although he had failed to achieve physical immortality, Gilgamesh had gained something far more valuable, a deeper understanding of life, death, and the nature of human existence. Upon returning to his city, Gilgamesh gazed upon the great walls of Uruk, the very walls he had helped to build. He realized that these walls and the city itself were symbols of his legacy, an enduring testament to his reign. While he could not live forever, the works he had accomplished, the city he had built, and the stories of his deeds would endure long after his death. With this newfound understanding, Gilgamesh resolved to rule Uruk with wisdom and compassion. He focused on creating a just and prosperous society, one that would stand the test of time. He understood that true immortality lay not in living forever but in leaving behind a legacy that would be remembered and honored by future generations. Gilgamesh's transformation from a proud and arrogant king into a wise and humble ruler is the central arc of the Epic of Gilgamesh. It is a journey that mirrors the universal human experience, the search for meaning, the struggle against mortality, and the realization that our true legacy lies in the impact we have on the world and the people around us. Philosophical and moral lessons from the Epic of Gilgamesh The Epic of Gilgamesh is more than just an ancient story, it is a profound exploration of the human condition, offering timeless lessons that continue to resonate with readers and listeners today. As we reflect on Gilgamesh's journey, several key philosophical and moral insights emerge, each offering a deeper understanding of life and death. 1. Acceptance of life's impermanence One of the most profound lessons from the Epic of Gilgamesh is the acceptance of life's impermanence and the inevitability of death. Gilgamesh's journey teaches us that rather than fearing death, we should embrace life, making the most of the time we have. The Epic reminds us that mortality is an inescapable part of the human experience and that our efforts to deny or escape it are ultimately futile. Instead, we should focus on living fully, cherishing each moment, and finding meaning in our actions and relationships. 2. Immortality through actions and legacy Throughout his quest, Gilgamesh learns that true immortality lies not in eternal life but in the lasting impact of one's actions. The epic reminds us that while we may not live forever, the good we do and the legacy we create can endure long after we are gone. 
Gilgamesh's realization that his legacy as a king and builder of Uruk would outlast his physical existence is a powerful reminder that our contributions to society and the world are what define our immortality. 3. The value of friendship and compassion The deep friendship between Gilgamesh and Enkidu is a central theme of the epic. Their bond not only helps Gilgamesh to grow beyond his arrogance, but it also teaches the value of companionship and empathy. The story encourages us to cherish and nurture our relationships, as they are integral to a meaningful life. Enkidu's influence on Gilgamesh is a testament to the transformative power of friendship, showing how the connections we make with others can shape our character and guide us on our journey. 4. The search for meaning in life Gilgamesh's quest for immortality is, at its core, a search for meaning. His journey highlights the importance of seeking purpose in our lives and how such a quest can lead to personal growth and understanding, even if it doesn't provide all the answers we seek. The epic suggests that the search for meaning is a fundamental aspect of the human experience and that it is through this search that we find the wisdom and strength to face life's challenges. 5. Humility before greater powers throughout the epic, Gilgamesh learns to temper his pride and accept his limitations. The story imparts the wisdom that humility and respect for forces beyond our control, whether divine or natural, are essential to living a balanced and fulfilling life. Gilgamesh's encounters with the gods, the mythical creatures, and the natural world teach him that there are powers greater than himself and that true wisdom lies in acknowledging and respecting these forces. Reflections on the human condition As we delve deeper into the epic of Gilgamesh, it becomes increasingly clear that this ancient story is much more than a simple tale of adventure and heroism. It is a profound meditation on the nature of existence, the inevitability of death, and the search for meaning in a transient world. In the first part of this narrative, we explored Gilgamesh's transformation from a tyrannical ruler to a wise and compassionate king, guided by his friendship with Enkidu and his quest for immortality. In the second part, we will further explore the implications of Gilgamesh's journey, particularly how it reflects the universal human struggle with mortality and the desire to leave a lasting legacy. We will also examine the cultural and historical significance of the epic, its influence on later literary and religious traditions, and the lessons it offers to modern readers. 1. The cultural and historical context of the epic To fully appreciate the epic of Gilgamesh, it is essential to understand the cultural and historical context in which it was created. The epic was composed during a time when the Sumerians, one of the earliest civilizations in the world, were flourishing in Mesopotamia. This civilization, which emerged around 4500 BCE, laid the foundations for many aspects of modern society, including writing, law, and urbanization. The Sumerians were a deeply religious people who believed that their lives were governed by the will of the gods. They saw themselves as servants of these divine beings, and much of their culture revolved around appeasing and honoring the gods through rituals, offerings, and the construction of grand temples. The Epic of Gilgamesh reflects these beliefs, with its narrative deeply intertwined with the interactions between humans and the divine. The epic also serves as a window into the Sumerians' understanding of the world and their place within it. It reveals their views on life, death, and the afterlife, as well as their ideas about heroism, leadership, and the responsibilities of rulers. Through Gilgamesh's story, we gain insight into the values and concerns of this ancient civilization, and we see how these ideas have been passed down through the ages, influencing later cultures and religions. Two. The influence of the epic on later traditions The Epic of Gilgamesh is one of the earliest known works of literature, and its influence can be seen in a variety of later literary and religious traditions. One of the most striking examples of this influence is the story of the Great Flood, which appears not only in the epic but also in the biblical tale of Noah's Ark. In both stories, a flood is sent by the divine as a form of punishment for humanity's sins, and a chosen individual is instructed to build a vessel to save themselves, their family, and a selection of animals. The similarities between these narratives suggest that the story of the flood was a shared cultural motif in the ancient Near East, with different versions of the tale being adapted by various cultures. The themes of friendship, mortality, and the quest for immortality found in the Epic of Gilgamesh also resonate in later works of literature and philosophy. 
The idea of a hero's journey, a quest for knowledge, self-discovery, and ultimately, the acceptance of one's fate, is a recurring motif in many cultures' mythologies and literary traditions. Gilgamesh's journey can be seen as a precursor to the epic quests of figures like Odysseus in Greek mythology, Aeneas in Roman literature, and even Dante in his Divine Comedy. Moreover, the philosophical questions raised by the epic, such as the nature of life and death, the possibility of an afterlife, and the meaning of existence, continue to be central concerns in religious and philosophical discourse. The story of Gilgamesh, with its exploration of these timeless themes, has had a lasting impact on the way humans think about their place in the world and their relationship with the divine. The evolution of Gilgamesh's character, from hero to sage one of the most compelling aspects of the epic of Gilgamesh is the evolution of its protagonist. Gilgamesh begins the story as a powerful but flawed king, proud, self-centered, and often tyrannical. His divine heritage gives him extraordinary abilities, but it also blinds him to the needs and suffering of his people. However, through his experiences, particularly his friendship with Enkidu and his quest for immortality, Gilgamesh undergoes a profound transformation. This transformation is evident in the way Gilgamesh's understanding of power and leadership changes over the course of the epic. In the beginning, he sees power as a means to dominate and control, using it to impose his will on others without regard for the consequences. However, as he confronts the limitations of his own mortality and witnesses the fragility of life, he begins to realize that true power lies not in force, but in wisdom and compassion. By the end of the epic, Gilgamesh has become a wise and just ruler, who understands that his legacy will be defined not by his conquests, but by the city he has built and the people he has served. This shift in perspective reflects a broader philosophical theme within the epic, the idea that wisdom and humility are the true marks of a great leader, rather than strength or aggression. This evolution from hero to sage is a common motif in ancient literature, symbolizing the journey from youthful arrogance to mature wisdom. In Gilgamesh's case, it also represents the human journey toward self-awareness and acceptance of one's place in the natural order. The role of friendship in the epic friendship plays a central role in the epic of Gilgamesh, serving as both the catalyst for Gilgamesh's transformation and the emotional core of the narrative. The bond between Gilgamesh and Enkidu is one of the most powerful elements of the story, illustrating the profound impact that a close friendship can have on an individual's character and life. Enkidu, created by the gods to be Gilgamesh's equal and counterpart, initially serves as a foil to the king's arrogance. However, their relationship quickly evolves from rivalry to deep camaraderie, with each man finding in the other a kindred spirit. This friendship humanizes Gilgamesh, softening his tyrannical tendencies and helping him to see the value in compassion and cooperation. The epic portrays their friendship as a sacred bond, one that transcends the ordinary relationships between men. It is a relationship built on mutual respect, loyalty, and a shared sense of purpose. Through their adventures together, Gilgamesh and Enkidu learn to rely on each other, and their bond becomes a source of strength and inspiration. The death of Enkidu is a turning point in the epic, plunging Gilgamesh into a profound grief that drives his quest for immortality. This loss forces Gilgamesh to confront the reality of death and the impermanence of life, leading him to seek answers that will give his existence meaning. In this sense, the friendship between Gilgamesh and Enkidu is not just a personal connection, but a vehicle for exploring the deeper philosophical themes of the epic. The portrayal of friendship in the epic of Gilgamesh offers valuable insights into the importance of human connections in the search for meaning and fulfillment. It suggests that our relationships with others are a crucial part of what gives life its value and that the bonds we form can have a lasting impact on our character and legacy. The quest for immortality and its lessons The central theme of the Epic of Gilgamesh is the quest for immortality, a journey that reflects humanity's universal desire to transcend the limitations of mortality. Gilgamesh's fear of death, triggered by the loss of Enkidu, drives him to seek out Utnapishtim and discover the secret to eternal life. However, the lessons he learns along the way reveal that the quest for immortality is fraught with challenges and ultimately unattainable for mortals. Gilgamesh's journey is marked by encounters with various beings and challenges, each of which teaches him important lessons about life and death. These lessons gradually lead him to the realization that immortality, 
as he initially conceived it, is an illusion. Instead, he comes to understand that true immortality lies in the legacy one leaves behind, in the memories, achievements, and impact that endure after one's death. The story of the plant of life, which is consumed by a serpent while Gilgamesh sleeps, serves as a poignant metaphor for the futility of seeking physical immortality. Despite his best efforts, Gilgamesh is unable to hold on to the plant, symbolizing the inevitable loss that comes with the passage of time. This loss forces Gilgamesh to accept that death is a natural part of life and that the pursuit of immortality is not the path to true fulfillment. Instead, Gilgamesh learns that the key to a meaningful life lies in embracing the present, cherishing relationships, and contributing to the greater good. His return to Uruk, where he focuses on building a strong and lasting city, reflects this newfound wisdom. He recognizes that while he cannot escape death, he can achieve a form of immortality through the legacy he leaves for future generations. This lesson is a central theme in the epic and one that resonates with readers and listeners across cultures and eras. It speaks to the universal human experience of confronting mortality and the search for meaning in the face of life's impermanence. The Symbolism of the Cedar Forest and Humbaba The cedar forest and its guardian, Humbaba, are among the most symbolic elements of the Epic of Gilgamesh. The forest represents both the natural world and the unknown, a place of mystery and danger that lies beyond the boundaries of human civilization. It is a sacred space, protected by the gods and inhabited by forces that defy human control. The journey of Gilgamesh and Enkidu into the cedar forest is not only a physical adventure but also a symbolic descent into the depths of the human psyche, a confrontation with the fears, desires, and primal forces that reside within. Humbaba, the fearsome guardian of the forest, embodies these untamed aspects of nature. He is a creature of immense power, capable of unleashing destruction with his breath and instilling terror in the hearts of those who approach him. Yet, he is also a protector, charged by the god and will to guard the sacred cedars and prevent their exploitation by humans. Humbaba's presence in the epic raises questions about the relationship between humanity and the natural world, as well as the consequences of overstepping the boundaries set by the divine. The defeat of Humbaba by Gilgamesh and Enkidu can be interpreted in multiple ways. On one level, it is a heroic victory, demonstrating the strength and courage of the two friends as they overcome a seemingly insurmountable foe. However, it also carries a deeper symbolic meaning. By slaying Humbaba and felling the sacred cedars, Gilgamesh and Enkidu are asserting their dominance over nature, challenging the god's authority, and crossing a threshold that separates the moral world from the divine. This act of defiance has significant repercussions, both for the characters and for the broader narrative. It sets in motion a chain of events that leads to Enkidu's death, Gilgamesh's grief, and his subsequent quest for immortality. The slaying of Humbaba can be seen as a turning point in the epic, a moment where Gilgamesh's hubris and ambition propel him toward a deeper understanding of his own limitations and the forces that govern the world. The symbolism of the cedar forest and Humbaba highlights the tension between humanity's desire to conquer and control the natural world and the recognition that some forces are beyond human mastery. It also reflects the broader theme of the epic, which explores the consequences of human actions, the interplay between power and responsibility, and the need for humility in the face of the unknown. The Role of the Gods in Divine Intervention the Epic of Gilgamesh is deeply rooted in the religious beliefs of the Sumerians, and the role of the gods is central to the narrative. The gods in the Epic are not distant, abstract entities, they are active participants in the lives of humans, intervening in their affairs, guiding their actions, and meeting out rewards and punishments. From the creation of Enkidu by the goddess Aruru to the granting of immortality to Utnapishtim by the gods, divine intervention is a recurring theme throughout the Epic. The gods are portrayed as powerful, capricious beings who have the ability to shape the destinies of mortals. However, they are also bound by their own rules and hierarchies, and their actions are often influenced by their relationships with one another. The interactions between the gods and mortals in the epic raise important questions about the nature of divine justice and the limits of human agency. For example, the punishment of Enkidu by the gods, following the slaying of Humbaba and the Bull of Heaven, 
reflects the idea that human actions have consequences that extend beyond the moral realm. It also suggests that the God's will is not always aligned with human desires, and that morals must navigate a complex and often unpredictable relationship with the divine. At the same time, the epic also explores the possibility of human resistance to divine will. Gilgamesh's quest for immortality, despite the God's decree that death is the fate of all mortals, is an example of human defiance in the face of divine authority. While his quest ultimately fails, it reflects the broader human desire to challenge the limitations imposed by the gods and to seek answers to the fundamental questions of existence. The role of the gods in the Epic of Gilgamesh underscores the tension between human agency and divine power, as well as the complex dynamics that govern the relationships between mortals and the divine. It also highlights the Sumerians' understanding of the world as a place where human actions are deeply intertwined with the will of the gods, and where the boundaries between the mortal and divine realms are fluid and permeable. The Philosophy of Mortality and Immortality The Epic of Gilgamesh is a philosophical exploration of mortality and the human condition. At its core, the epic grapples with the inevitability of death and the desire for immortality, themes that are as relevant today as they were in ancient times. Gilgamesh's journey is driven by his fear of death and his longing to escape the fate that awaits all mortals. This fear is a powerful motivator, pushing him to seek out Utnapishtim and discover the secret of eternal life. However, the lessons he learns along the way reveal that immortality, as he initially conceived it, is not attainable. Instead, the epic suggests that the quest for immortality is a metaphor for the human search for meaning and purpose in life. The story of the plan of life, which is lost to the serpent, serves as a poignant reminder of the impermanence of all things. No matter how hard we strive to preserve our youth or extend our lives, time inevitably takes its toll. The epic teaches that rather than seeking to escape death, we should focus on living a life that is meaningful and fulfilling, one that leaves a lasting legacy for future generations. This philosophy is reflected in Gilgamesh's final realization that true immortality lies not in physical existence, but in the memories and achievements that endure after we are gone. By returning to Uruk and dedicating himself to building a strong and prosperous city, Gilgamesh accepts his mortality and finds a way to achieve a form of immortality through his legacy. The epic also suggests that the acceptance of mortality is a key to wisdom. Gilgamesh's transformation from a proud and arrogant king to a wise and humble ruler is a journey toward understanding the limits of human existence and the value of living in harmony with the world around us. The Legacy of Gilgamesh and the Enduring Impact of the Epic The Epic of Gilgamesh has had a profound and lasting impact on literature, philosophy, and religious thought. As one of the earliest known works of literature, it has influenced countless other stories, myths, and religious texts. Its themes of friendship, mortality, and the quest for meaning resonate across cultures and eras, making it a timeless exploration of the human condition. The character of Gilgamesh, with his flaws and virtues, has become an archetype for the hero's journey, a narrative structure that has been replicated in countless stories throughout history. His evolution from a tyrant to a wise king reflects the universal theme of personal growth and the search for wisdom, while his quest for immortality mirrors the human desire to transcend the limitations of our existence. The epic's influence can be seen in various aspects of Western and Eastern literature. For example, the story of the Great Flood in the Epic of Gilgamesh is paralleled in the Bible's account of Noah's Ark, suggesting that the ancient Near Eastern Flood narrative had a significant impact on later religious traditions. Similarly, the themes of friendship, heroism, and the search for meaning are echoed in the works of Homer, Virgil, and Dante, among others. Beyond its literary and philosophical significance, the Epic of Gilgamesh also provides valuable insights into the culture and beliefs of the ancient Sumerians. Through the Epic, we gain a deeper understanding of how the Sumerians viewed the world, their relationship with the gods, and their ideas about life, death, and the afterlife. The enduring appeal of the Epic of Gilgamesh lies in its exploration of universal themes that continue to resonate with readers and listeners today. It speaks to the fundamental questions that have always been at the heart of the human experience. What is the meaning of life? How do we confront our mortality? What is the nature of true friendship? 
and how do we leave a legacy that will outlast our physical existence? The Modern Relevance of the Epic In the modern world, the Epic of Gilgamesh remains relevant as a source of wisdom and inspiration. Its themes and lessons continue to resonate with people from all walks of life, offering insights into the challenges and opportunities we face as we navigate the complexities of the human experience. The epic's exploration of mortality, for example, is particularly relevant in a time when advancements in science and medicine are pushing the boundaries of human life expectancy. As we grapple with questions about the ethical and philosophical implications of extending life, the Epic of Gilgamesh reminds us that the quest for immortality is not a new one, and that it is ultimately the quality of life, rather than its duration, that defines our legacy. Similarly, the Epic's emphasis on friendship and community speaks to the importance of human connections in an increasingly fragmented and individualistic society. Gilgamesh's bond with Enkidu serves as a powerful reminder of the value of relationships in shaping our character and giving meaning to our lives.